Morning guys, hope you had a good weekend. Uh, Leaf's got another fault. Uh, you can't make this up, can you? Um, basically, um, when I get home later on uh, today, I'm actually gonna get my lapel mark and basically place it down on the uh, member underneath the bonnet um, and actually record the sound for you. So basically, this is just a, an intro into the sound, as it were. Um, now, basically, it's the Motlin sound that's come back and it is really loud. Um, a lot louder than what it was. Now, what I personally think has happened is when I was told that the uh, quote unquote special grease wasn't applied at the point of manufacturing, so basically when they assembled the car, they didn't use this grease um, and they've replaced the CV joints. I think the problem is, is that whatever they attach to, probably at both ends, have basically worn. Um, I assume they use the grease. I don't know if you can hear that. If that's catching out on camera. But basically, um, it's really, really noisy. It sounds like sounds like basically the big ends are gone on a traditional engine. It's really bad. Anyway, um, yeah. I can hear it all the time, it's doing it on demand, basically it's doing it at lower speeds but the bottom line is, like I say, whatever those drive shafts or CV joints were attached to at either end, I think they're worn as well because obviously if they didn't have the grease, I don't know if, they, if the grease was only applicable to the... God, that's so noisy. So the gearbox end or the reduction gear end and or the hubs, I don't know, maybe it was only applied at one end but the bottom line is, is that, like I say, because that hasn't been applied whatever they've made it to that's worn that out as well um personally they should have replaced well either or either i mean this is the problem with the parent group not believing the dealers because if the parent group's only giving them limited limited amount of money for each individual fault basically you as a customer is going to be ping pong ping ponging backwards and forwards because now it's got to go back again which is even more time off the road so they're probably going to want to do a day of diagnostics then basically I assume the parts have got to be ordered in, which means I've got to then pick the car up, bring it back. This is going to push into four weeks now. Um, I can't believe the amount of faults this car's had. It is just scary. And I stand by this 100%. Nissan have basically assumed and assumed wrongly that the 40 kilowatt versions were going to be driven exactly the same as the 30 and the 24s. I mean, in terms of most people that I see driving in vehicles, I mean, I drive this car normally like I would do. That's how I point of doing this test. I'm not putting pussyfooting around. I'm not driving it hard. I'm just driving it like I would do traditionally. I mean, we've got a mixture of 30s and 40s here, and I get up to speed, not mega quick, obviously, with the traffic, um, and I just drive it like normal. Whereas the traditional vehicles that I see, like the previous shape one being driven around, most people drive them extremely conservatively because they're basically worrying about the range all the time, which kind of makes sense. Now we haven't got the range issues to a certain extent, apart from when you're doing mega journeys, um, people are driving them like normal um, and they haven't upgraded the components to match it. The other thing, of course, is that basically they put that much powerful power output through all of the components on the front end. Um, I mean, jumping up from 109 was it 250 plus and then an absolutely huge amount of slug of torque on top of that on the previous over the previous shape one is a recipe for In disaster yards, speed camera. sorry about that guys um and that's why i think we're having all these problems steering problems uh, suspension mount problems drive shaft problems the whole front end hasn't been upgraded i'm, I'm convinced of that now they basically just like i said a minute ago they've just thought, oh, most people, because they've probably got the telematics off the old system where people have actually driven them very sedately and they've just thought, oh, people are gonna do exactly the same thing. I'd say something now, I'll make an even bolder statement. If they haven't upgraded stuff over the 62, these problems are gonna be exacerbated even more so because those cars are getting very close to what you probably get out of a tank of fuel. Um, and people are gonna drive them like completely normal. In fact, they're probably gonna drive them even harder than what people drive the 40s. Um, but yeah, we'll have to see if someone ever does, if maybe you get data further down the line. Anyway, guys, when I get home, 
I'll get my lapel mic out and I'll do what I've done with the modeling test and I'll record this sound if it didn't actually pick it up on this and I'll speak to you on the next one when I get some more data back of what's going to be occurring bye for now okay guys so just got home and what I'm going to do is I'll put the lapel mic then if you can see it I point it out it's uh, down there then if you can see that it's a little bushy thing so I basically put duct tape and put it on that member down there and what I'm going to do now is plug this in and I think I put the, um, I think I wedged it in here last time, put duct tape across here. So I'll clean that off in a minute and then I'll whack the camera in there. Anyway, I'll speak to you guys in a minute. Thank <laughs> you. 